Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to show you how to do clustering instead of like we have in the past with R and in R or bringing it from R into Power BI. We're actually going to do the whole clustering in Power BI and we're going to compare it to the clustering we have from the k-means process that we did in R in another video. So if you haven't seen that video, please go back and watch. It's not a part of the series, but it'd be good for you to have. I'm just turning on the highlighter here so you can follow what we're doing here. Um, so basically what I have, I already have this built out. So what this is, is cluster data, right, that I've done on a scatter plot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this step by step in the next page here. I've got that right here. So this is a generic, uh, generic uh, cluster, uh, scatter plot, whatever you want to call it. I'm not cluster, I'm talking, this is a scatter plot, okay? Now how on earth would you do clustering because it's not an option, right? It's not a normal option in Power BI. So how do we get this page to look like the top parts of this page? Now this is the Taekwondo Karate Region 4 Sales data that I've shown before. But what we're going to do is this is what you saw before was this one and this one. This was sales and transactions by K-Means. And K-Means gave us four clusters, right? So I'm going to show you how to do that in Power BI while ever having to leave Power BI. And you're going to find out the auto clustering method in Power BI determines that there's five. It doesn't mean that there's wrong, okay? I'm going to believe that this four is more accurate, but it doesn't matter. You're close enough that, you know, it could be significant to look at the five also. Sometimes when you look at the bend, it, the, they call it the elbow and the k-means, you might need to go with four or five. It might be between the two. It might be both of them. So you have to do a visual check and see what it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this guy based on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take over here. This is what you're starting with, right? So let's click on this visual right here. This is a what? This is a scatter chart, scatter plot, same thing. Okay. And what do you do with a scatter plot? You're going to have your details. Your details is going to be your measurement. So that's going to be like sales, transactions, um, weather, whatever it is, right? Then you're going to have an X and a Y axis, right? In this case, I've got latitude and longitude. I'm using the average of both because I'm going to map them also. Okay. And then we also have the same thing down here. So you got details is sales and size is sales. So that's how you come up with this. So as long as you've done that here, see, details of sales, X axis in this case is the average of our latitude. The y axis is the average of our longitude, and the size is the sales. Okay? As long as you've done that, you'll come up like this. Okay? If I take these and I look at them, I've got this set to sum. This is obviously set to average. This is obviously set to average because if it wasn't, it wouldn't say average of it. And then sales, if you go up here, is not set to anything. Okay? So that's our details and our size and our x and y axes, right? Now, from here, what do I do to get the clusters? Because clusters is not something I can pick here, right? Instead, what you do is you go up here. See these three little dots for more options right here? Some people call it the hamburger if it's turned the other way. Well, it's just three dots. But click on this, and you've got an extra field that you can choose from that's only in the scatter plots, and that's this guy right here automatically find clusters. So it's going to find clusters on this data based on sales, right? Sales and sales. See that? So let's hit that automatically find the cluster. So it's going to go ahead and do this. And it's going to tell you again here to make sure you select the right one. So if I put uh, something else in here, if I put um, longitude in here, well, it's going to determine that based on longitude, which is not going to be correct because that doesn't that's meaningless information except for the locations for a plot later on on a map. So now we've got name, sales, clusters, field of sales, right? So we're going to make this and then cluster for sales. So what it's going to do is going to end up with a field just like this, sales, clusters, clusters for sales. So what we'll do is we'll call this, instead of sales, clusters, let's call it two because we're making this for page two. Or we could say for page two. Let's do that. So we know this one's separate in the first one, but it's going to be the same thing. All right, so because it's the same data. So, and then you can pick, either you can pick number, let's say I want to pick four. I could do that here, but I want to do the auto method, right? I want Power BI to use its schematics, its algorithms, and to go and pick that, okay? So you got auto, find it, based on that, hit okay. Boom, here we go. It's working on it, it's gonna think through it a little bit, it doesn't take too long, it well, it depends on your data. It depends how many rows and how much data you have, and there it is, it comes back, and look, it's got how many? Five clusters, right? Cluster one, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, now one problem I have with this versus the first one is I had to do one thing extra, and what that was is take a look at it. When it comes up here, it's thinking. There we go. I need to go and add, see like right here, I did this. I added, took cluster five, because cluster five was too close in color to cluster two, and I made it this purple color. So let's do that here, same thing. So let's go here, and let's go to our colors, right? Data, data colors, and this last one here, let's pick something like that purple one I picked. I think it was this one. And uh, then let's see how now you can see it. If it didn't have that, it really didn't show you where that middle one was or that fifth one was. It's kind of like blended in there. But now you can clearly see it. So let's go to the other page and show you how we're doing this. So here we are. We haven't fixed this map yet. But on this one, see the same thing? Cluster 5 is blended in. I mean, you can kind of see it, but not really. In here, it looks like this is all one cluster there. So let's do the same thing. So let's do this. Make sure we're clicked on to our to this visual, right? And what we're gonna do is go right here, data colors, and that last one, same thing, let's pick that purple one. Boom, boom, now you can see it. See how clear that makes it, night is day. And uh, then, I mean, I can go make it pretty and put different names on it, like title and stuff like that, I don't need to. So now what we're gonna do is this guy right here is already what? Let's take a look at this. Let's go back to this one, remember? This one is where you're gonna be creating how it looks. This is more of the data behind it, right? So what we're doing on this one is we already have sales, longitude, and latitude. But what we want to do is I want it to look like this one, right? I want it to be like this one. Watch. Give it a second here. It'll pop up. It's got to update itself. There we go. I want it to look like this instead of like all green so I can see, you know, what are the different clusters over here. I want to see all the different clusters on this map. So let's go back here. Let's look at this one and see how they're all the same color. I need to make that difference. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's go here, right? What are we going to do? And, uh, oh, we got to click on this. That might help. And what I need is see this legend field, how it's blank. So now I've got, let's pull this over a little bit so we can see what we're dealing with here. See that? This one's page two. So this is the one I just created here. I could use the other one, but that's from the other page. It doesn't matter. It's the same data. But just so you can see, follow what we're doing here. We're going to take this one, right? and we're gonna put it right there in the legend. Boom, there it is, look at that. Now, same problem again, we put in there, it doesn't automatically give this purple one or whatever color we wanna make it, so it kinda of makes this big gray area all kinda of blend together. And does it really? No, it doesn't, we already know that. So let's go here, let's go to data colors, let's go down here to cluster five and put that purple back in there. Boom, there you can see it. You can make it a different color if you wanted to, you can make it blue, uh, whatever. Uh, we could get a darker purple to make it stand out a little bit better. Whatever we want to do, that's fine. But see, now you can clearly see the way it looks. Now, now that you've seen how we create that, so remember, we t you take a what a scatter chart or scatter plot, whatever you want to call it, and uh, it's right here. This guy, it's called scatter chart in Power BI. And what you do is once you've created that correctly, and it shows correctly, then you click these three dots. And see, now I don't have that option because I already created the clusters. But when you create a new one, you have that added option to select clusters or to uh, add for them, as we did earlier. And then you can go and add the clusters, okay? And then you can bring them over into your map because you have a cluster field. That's what that one creates when you do that, as we did before. So now let's compare. Let's go back and take a look at this, right? So we have... The first two the same as on the on the other page, right? Give it a second here to appear. So these are the two that we did with the Power BI, right? So Power BI does five, right? So I put the clusters in here in a KPI field down here, and same thing with here from the other field from the K means. So we got five versus four. So these two right here are maps from the K means. This one's transactions, it's not as important here. Take a look at this one, because the purpose here is just to compare the two. So if you look at these two, here I've got four clusters, right? You've got yellow, some kind of reddish color, uh, gray, and uh, green. Here I've got five. So what is the difference? It's kind of got like, so these three right here are in the red, they're big, There's uh, and there may be more to the southwest. Uh, uh, maybe their patterns are different, maybe there's different things, but this quickly gives you within seconds clustering on your data and it doesn't matter what your data is as long as it's something that has an x and y differentiator and there's different days or different 
measures, different, uh, you know, there's variance between the days. You'll see a good scatter plot, and then you'll be able to uh, do this now. To see it in a map, you obviously have to have either city and state, or best is to have latitude and longitude. And the reason why you want to have that is, let's say you got three stores in a, in a city. Well, if you use city state, they're all in the same dot, right? Versus if you have latitude and longitude, they're not, and they'll look more like they're next to each other rather than being right on top of each other. So you'll be able to see it better. Um, and then when you zone in, you can see it a little bit better than if you didn't. Now, does that mean that this one with five is better or worse than this one with four? You would have to go and do some advanced or some other, you know, looks into it to see if that is truly correct. And a lot of times with clustering, it also is how it feels and how the results look. Um, it's not necessarily 100% one way or the other. So it's a gr this is a great way to go, once you've done a K-means clustering, to go into Power BI and just do a Power BI cluster and just compare the two and see which you like, which one works best. The cool thing about this one is it's a lot faster than the R1. So I can literally do a uh, cluster uh, on a data set in literally seconds with this. You saw what I did. So if I go back to page two here, you just put in a scatter plot, right? Boom, add it in. Once you have the scatter plot, remember you got to go and put in the same fields as this, except for the cluster. So you're gonna have sales, sales, latitude, longitude. So you'd have where's our sales? Here we go. There's sales. So you'd have sales. Remember that sales. Then we got sales again down here in our size, and then we've got latitude and we've got longitude, right? And see how they go automatically go to average here. If they don't, you set them to average. But once you see how your data looks, then you're ready right from here. You click this, and then you've got that field again. Automatically find the clusters. You do that, and you're good to go. So this is how to do clustering on your data in Power BI in literally seconds. I hope you found this helpful and informational. Uh, please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share, and be sure and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you'd like to see. What would you like to see next coming in my next videos? Thanks again. Have a great day.